So recently in my recommended feed, I've been seeing people showing off their elevator designs. So I wanted to enter the fray with my own. Introducing the next build in my series, we have the Paternoster Lift. The name Paternoster, meaning our father, was originally applied to this device because the elevator is in the form of a loop and is thus similar to rosary beads used as an aid in reciting prayers. Originally built in 1868 by Peter Ellis and patented in 1877 by Peter Hart. While initially popular in the early 20th century, due to significantly higher risk, construction of new paternosters was stopped in the mid-1970s, being replaced with the conventional elevators we know today. However, in Minecraft, we aren't so worried about that risk. It's actually kind of funny. Until about two or three weeks ago, I didn't even realize that the Paternoster lift existed. But with the influx of people I've seen making their own elevator videos, when I looked into it myself, I discovered that this type of lift existed. And so, I wanted to build it. This entire build works off of the power of just one water wheel. The base speed of the water wheel is 20 RPM, which is perfect because that translates to 160 SU for the mechanical bearing. And because I'm using two of them, that means that I have a 100% load, not wasting a single stress unit. And that's in large part due to the fact that gantry carriages don't actually use SU for traveling, so you can have as many lifts as you want without any effect on the stress of your overall system. The 20 RPM provided by the water wheel is fed directly into the sequence gear shift and then following into the mechanical bearing. The mechanical bearing rotates 180 degrees, carrying with it the linear chassis, the sticker, the redstone contact, and the redstone link. When the redstone contact attached to the gantry carriage meets with the one by the sticker, the sticker turns on. The lift platforms themselves are glued together, so when the sticker grabs the gantry carriage, the entire lift platform goes with it. Upon reaching the other side, the gantry carriage begins to move again, going upwards due to the difference in the rotation of the gantry shafts thus breaking the redstone connection, turning the sticker off, just in time for the machine to rotate back to its original position. On the top side, I have the exact same setup, other than the redstone link, which is reversed from what it's shown below. Here are the redstone links for the top side, and here are the redstone links for the bottom. Now the point of this little contraption here is just to supply rotational power to this rotation speed controller here. This takes the rotational speed provided by the gantry shafts, and downsteps it to an RPM of 20 thus getting us the other half of our stress units provided by the water wheel. As for the controller itself, it is set to 64, which is then doubled by the large cogwheel feeding the small cogwheel, making the gantry shaft spin in an RPM of 128. I've split the schematic into three parts, the bottom, middle, and top. When you are pasting, placing, or blasting the schematic in, there's a couple things to be aware of. If you're going to be using more than one of these lifts, you want to set the frequencies for your redstone links now. As for supplying the power, go ahead and break these two blocks here. If your water wheel isn't facing the right way, be sure to reverse its direction. Then go ahead and place your water directly above it. Block off the water, and then replace the vertical gearbox. At this point, go ahead and break this encased chain drive in the middle. Next we have the middle. This schematic has 10 gantry shafts going in opposite directions on both sides with the lift platforms at opposite corners. This is so that they don't immediately interact with the redstone contacts, as you can see on the lower left corner. And then moving on to our top section. Once it's built, you'll want to make sure that you set your redstone frequencies right away, and ensure your rotation speed controller is set to 20. And please be sure that you have your sequence gear shift at the right settings. Before you reconnect the encased chain drive, there is one thing that you should know, and that is how many lift platforms each height can contain. For that, the easiest way to know is to stick with the pattern supplied by the middle schematic, which is two lifts per 10 blocks of height. However, if you have a lift of 40 blocks or higher, you will need to go to the bottom rotation speed controller and slow down the speed to 56 or lower, depending on how high you have it. So let's go ahead and hook it up. If you run into this problem, where all of your lift platforms are stuck together, the easiest way to solve this is by breaking each of the gantry carriages and then replacing them one by one, waiting to place the next one when you can make sure that it gets all the way to the top. And there we go. Now it's back in order. Though if it's happening several times in a row, then you might need to slow down your rotation speed controller on the bottom. And that should be everything that you need to know. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like or consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any complications or if there's something that you don't understand, please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.